Okay, and now the update on the topic I kind of announced a few weeks ago. And the topic is the automatic uh, auto-tune uh, for the multi-rotors. And I'm super happy to announce that I'm progressing. <laughs> And unfortunately, unfortunately, the statement that I'm progressing is the only statement that I can really make. I, for the last month or so, maybe slightly less than a month, I'm mostly collecting the data that uh, by doing the uh, flights because I need the data to be able to know what flight controller is doing and are we should we increase the gains or lower the gains. I can I can show you some of the things I have. Uh, I showed some of them last time, but this time I have probably the better data, so I should be able to show you more interesting stuff. Like for example, right now I'm concentrating on the detection of the high frequency vibrations uh, because one of the PID tuning methods, the Z, ZN, ZN, I don't remember the exact uh, names of those two guys, mostly assumes that you have to push the PID controller as high with the P gains so that there are oscillations. And when you have the oscillations, that means you basically have to cut the P gains in half. So my, my first attempt will be to slowly increase the P gains, detect the oscillation, and when the oscillation is detected, cut it in half, and we have something like a tune. So, uh, for example, this uh, this lock uh, shows uh, when I multiplied my normal p gain or roll by 3 instead of uh, 32 it's uh, at the p gain 96 it's flyable it's flyable but when you open the throttle and do a fast roll or flip you hear that the oscillation but besides that it flies great uh, not falling from the sky nothing like that and here it's clearly visible that in this area we have the oscillation so I'm trying to figure out the way how to detect this. I was, for example, trying to detect this with the statistical analysis because here I have root mean square and the standard deviation of the of the error. Uh, however, it turned out that well, it's not really working like I expected because yes, uh, during the oscillation phase, the root mean square and standard deviation of the error slightly grows. But it's not growing that much to be able to, to have this clean distinction that uh, we are oscillating. However, it's very eager to oscillate at the end of the maneuver when there is really like oscillation is not very visible. However, the amplitude is slightly bigger. And here the root mean square and the standard deviation of the signal like skyrocketed. But it was too late in the, in the, in the flow. So instead of that, I'm trying to detect right now the main... Uh, uh, main frequency. Oh, my daughter got me a cookie. I love cookies, but yeah. Mmm, a cinnamon cookie from IKEA. Awesome. I like cookies. <laughs> I should not like cookies because I'm fat, but still, I like cookies. Anyhow, uh, so this square signal over here means that the FFT analysis of this of the signal gives the like okay something is happening so maybe we'll be able to use this and um, even today I was working on the method called the high frequency detector and that will detect the high frequency vibration uh, and I have like some of the code that probably uh, it's not working right now, but still, I have something. I also have some of the data that will allow us to detect the low frequency vibration. The low frequency vibration is the situation when you just don't have enough of the P gain and the, the, it wobbles. And here it's a completely different story because only the root mean square and the standard deviation observation will just give you information. Okay, here the standard deviation skyrocketed that means we are oscillating so i'm getting somewhere i will not be able to build one set of settings for the detector that will detect on every size of the 
of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the multi-rotor drones because the bigger the, the drone gets, the lower the high frequency vibration frequency and thus it's harder to distinguish that from the, from the background noise. So most probably it will end up at seven, eight, maybe eight, maybe nine inches max, not something bigger. Um, because, uh, for example, five inches, five inches will probably vibrate at around 50 hertz, somewhere between 40 and 60 hertz. While um, when I made the same experiment with my seven inches, the vibration frequency went down to 25 hertz. And if I will increase the size of the of the of the arms on the motors and the frequency will go even lower and it will be super hard to distinguish if this vibration is the low frequency vibration or the high frequency vibration and probably this is this is why the detection uh, on the methods like the harakiri and clean flight g2 never really worked but, so like i said I'm getting somewhere, I have some data, maybe it will work, maybe it will not work, and it's definitely too early yet to say. I will keep you updated.